I got this lecture at the moment, which is about the comparison between genetic engineering and hip hop. Hip hop and genetic engineering were invented within six weeks of each other, both in New York in 1973. <laughs> and when that, that was a serendipitous finding because I was interested in, in genetic engineering as a geneticist. And I was interested in hip hop as a white middle class boy from, yeah. from Suffolk. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as I saw that, as soon as I began to see that connection, then you see this, the serendipity of these two things is, is really striking. So genetic engineering is the sampling of the genes of two different or multiple different organisms in order to create something new that couldn't possibly have existed, couldn't possibly have evolved. Hip hop is the mixing, taking samples, taking different aspects of, of, of music that have been recorded and mixing them together in order to create something that couldn't have, have naturally existed. And so this, this became, I sort of started working this up as a, as a model for talking about the two things, right? It then became really interesting because what emerged out of this process was that um, the same restrictions to do with ownership, to do with patents in genes, so gene patenting, which for a long time has been really restrictive on the creative flow in science. Uh, the same restrictions in the imposition of copyright in sampling restricted creativity in popular music. And it was, the, the parallels are <coughs> incredible. There was a free flow during the 70s and 80s of genetic engineering and then people started to notice that it was potentially lucrative and then there was a real gold rush on owning genes. So here's a weird fact that we all have 20,000-ish genes and round about a, a quarter of them in some form are owned by not you, right? which is a really weird thing to do with the uh, shortfallings of, of patent law. Now, something vaguely similar happened in, in, um, in music with regards to copyright over the last 20 years, which is that when there was this free flow during the golden era of, of hip-hop, hip -hop, there, there was this free flow of copyrighted material which enabled the, the this sort of boom of, of this music uh, genre, which turned it into a huge industry. And as soon as it became a huge industry, the imposition of copyright by the people who owned it prevented it from being creative in the same way. But there's a big difference, and this, this is where I, I found it really interesting. When, uh, when copyright stops the free flow of creativity in music, it just goes back underground because no one really cares unless you're going to get sued. But in science, it's a really big deal. Right? There should, you can't stem the flow of creativity. You can't be a researcher who then suddenly finds that they get to a, a particular gene or a particular molecule and they can't continue research on that without being issued a, a license that they have to pay for. And that's a real problem. So the ability to talk about music and copyright and genes and patenting together enabled me to, to expose people that might not have thought about it to an idea which I think is fundamentally important, which is that uh, science is an open endeavour where the free flow of of ideas and the exchange of ideas and materials is absolutely core to making scientific progress, progress about knowledge. And um, yeah, I could, only, I could only do that by being a hip hop nerd as well as being a, a science nerd. So, you know, thinking about these things in a serendipitous way, thinking about things that you don't necessarily think about together, I think is, is a useful way of, of, uh, of thinking about complex ideas. <laughs>